Uh, please explain, Dolly. This is the first that I mentioned it to you. All right, well... Have you ever seen an AI service that can generate images from a text prompt? Uh, Delhi is far from the first. There have been others in the past. Uh, to give an example, assuming that this works, uh, I have make no guarantees for reasons I'll explain here in a minute. Let's try... Uh... Let's see what this comes up with. Too much traffic, please try again. All right, so what has happened? You see this up here, this community tab that says that there's 298 threads? One week ago, that was like 60. Th this site has absolutely blown the fuck up over the past week in popularity. Uh. I'll, I'll bring up some images that I have generated from prompts to show you a little bit of the potential of what this AI can generate. I've already I've already showed one. How about I just like drag it onto the stream window itself? In fact, you know what? How about I just move? Uh, oh. Uh, yeah. How how about I just like keep this in the window or something? Actually, no, I don't like that. I'll, I'll keep it like this. So... Yeah, this, this is an, an example. Not a very good one. And the first time... This, this is the first thing I ever got out of Dally Mini. Uh, it recognizes who Violet Evergarden is. It recognizes what snow is. And it managed to, you know, impose a likeness of Violet Evergarden into a snowy scene, even with, like, little snow particles in front of her face. Unfortunately, it, di it did not successfully generate a Grinch like I'd wanted. I have come to find out that there is, uh, it is very, very difficult to get more than one character into the same shot. Even if it's two, like, really well-known characters, such as, uh, yeah, let, let, let's, let's try another prompt and see if it works. I'll try one live, but no guarantees. Um... You know what? I, I I found a meme of these two before. <laughs> God, I, I hope that this works at some point, but as you can see, it is very, very busy, very, very flooded with server requests. And because of that, like, OK, to put this into perspective, several weeks ago, Vinny of Vine Sauce showed a little bit of what this uh, this AI can do. People were like, all right, cool, that's cool. Uh, some people went and tried it out, but not a lot. And then like, he did two more live streams showing off uh, images from Delhi Mini, as well as other AIs. Uh, there are others out there that are even more powerful than this. Um, and then Markiplier did a video on it. So, like, v Vine Sauce is a pretty big deal on YouTube, but Markiplier is like a whole nother echelon. And after he did a video not only showing off Dally and mentioning it by name, he also outright requested that people watching his video go and solicit this AI and generate stuff to send to him. And then the floodgates opened, and now almost no one can use this because of how busy it is. I'm gonna give it one last try. Uh, what, what's some other like recognizable characters? How about, how about... Oh, how about it? Yeah, too much traffic, try again. So that's pretty much uh, the fate of anyone that tries to use this right now. However, What's the appeal of this again, aside from spook value? Oh gosh, is that really what your mind turned to first? The ability to type in anything you want and get a coherent output. Oops. Uh, for example, this, which I showed on stream the other day. Uh, not my stream, but during, like, uh, while we were watching Violet Evergarden. Not, 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 
quite the result that I had in mind, but it's, it's getting pretty close. What's a really good example that I have? Here's an old Vine Sauce meme that you may be aware of. Harrison Ford under the floorboards. The one in the top left came out pretty much exactly like I had hoped he it would. There he is, just popping his head out of the floorboards. And it took no effort other than typing a prompt into an AI. And I find that to be frankly amazing. Furthermore, uh, Downley in particular has a certain amount of strengths and weaknesses. Uh, I don't have all that much saved that really demonstrates this, but a lot of people have shown uh, that it has a capability of mimicking art styles to a certain extent, such as a painting by Matisse, or in the style of a certain anime, or as a Renaissance painting, or as a 2D sketch. Uh, the uh, digital art seems to produce really, really good uh, effects. I'll show one that I got without telling you what the prompt was that I think turned out like amazing. I also used an AI upscaler in order to, you know, enlarge the image from its base of like 160 by 160 pixels. Like, that looks really fucking cool, if you ask me. And the fact that it was it, I was able to get this generated by simply describing it just blows my mind. It's like we're entering an entirely new age of uh, art, really. Could be an interesting tool for artists looking for a reference picture that might not exist. Yes, I, I think there's a lot of potential to, like, generate prompts. Like, you, you, you think of a vague concept, the, I, the AI comes up with something kind of blurry and kind of vague, but you can build on that, you know, if you yourself are an artist and create something interesting out of it. So it's an art version of Akinator? No, uh, Akinator is a very specific 20 questions kind of game. Uh, the, the, these, are, these are entities that don't exist. Akinator pulls from, you know, a grand uh, user-generated library of uh, people and characters that, that do exist. And he tries to match things with, you know, those features. With this, okay. We, we just sat through an entire Mother Direct. How about this? I was talking about Mother 4 before. One of the prompts I put in was Mother 4 main character. None of these characters have ever existed in any real project by Nintendo or in any fan project. There is a Mother 4. None of these characters are, are even remotely relevant to that project. The AI generated these entirely on its own, with the help of, of course, you know, publicly available um, information that's been distributed on the uh, internet. With an AI, sure they look through all the pictures with similar keywords and mash them together. I'm sure there's something like that that goes into it. How long until it goes evil? Well, funny you should mention that. Hold on a minute. Someone asked Dally to make a self-portrait. I think I can find this relatively quickly. Uh, where, where the hell is it? First of all, just take that and try to imagine what an AI could come up with as a self-portrait. Okay, shoot, I'm, I'm not seeing it in the Google results. Someone put that in and got some, like, creepy imagery of a, like, a prison inmate with a striped shirt uh, behind bars, behind, like, prison bars. <laughs> like, yelling between the bars. Um, now, granted, some people have been known to, like, pull pranks. You know, do, do, a, do a jape every now and again with this AI. So they'll type in one thing and then rewrite the prompt to imply something else. Uh, a particularly famous, uh, like, uh, a specific instance of that that's been going around viral on the internet lately is uh, Discord Moderator Trail Cam. Which I'm quite certain that that's not what they typed in to get these results, but uh, that is an instance of what can be generated with, uh, with Dowie. 
<laughs> Shoot, I really wish I could find that one with the with the prison inmate. I it was really funny and now I can't find it. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, this this AI really does not handle faces well. Uh, as is uh, noteworthy, when I attempted to... I specifically was getting sick of the spooky shadow eyes and the faceless ones, so I asked it to generate a normal face with normal eyes. And this is what I got. I think I've already shared this on Discord, too. The only one that I've been, I'm have been i remotely okay with is the top middle. And even then, it looks a little bit, like, cartoony. Like, it, it's, it's, it's a person going wall-eyed. <laughs> With a little edit, it could look all right, but like, don't don't look too closely at any of the, any of the other ones, because like, the middle one in particular has like a weird lotus hole effect going on with the right hand eye. Boom was from Left for Dead in real life. All right, I'm not going to I'm not going to actually type in any prompts because, as I've already shown, uh, the the servers are completely overloaded with traffic right now because of how this took off. I can get this running locally, but that would take a bit of uh, a bit of time and a bit of effort, and I'm trying to wrap, wrap things up here. So maybe I'll do that next time. We'll do like uh, a live session of Dally Mini and, uh, you know, do, do fun stuff from there. I could take chat prompts and we could, you know, do things one by one. Oh, wait a minute. Boomers in real life. That's what you were, you were describing. You were describing the thing. You weren't requesting anything. All right, sorry. That, <laughs> that was that was my mistake. Bottom middle looks a bit like G-Man, but edited. Bottom middle face. Oh, oh, right, right, right. The the faces. <laughs> Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. There are actually some game developers out there that are attempting to incorporate. Uh, image generators like Dali Mini and other such things into like live into the games that they're making. Uh, there was one that I came across the other day. I think it was called like Waifu Builder or something like that that specifically caters to uh, generating uh, you know anime portraits. And it uses this to you know it, I, I think it plays out kind of like a card game. So that's like one of the perks is that people can generate their own avatar with this AI and use that in the game as it continues generating more uh, portraits on the fly for NPCs that you run into. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and even in this current state, like I could I could imagine like an entire AI generated animation for a character talking and it would probably be really creepy and unnerving. But if you have a character like the G-Man, like, people wouldn't care. It would enhance the effect. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential there for that sort of thing to be incorporated live into a game. Uh, I think I already shared this on Discord as well. Uh, I attempted to have it guess <laughs> which character from Persona 4 was the best and uh, got a really peculiar mishmash. None of these really look like Persona characters to me. But a couple of them in the middle, and the one in the top right, kind of resemble Chie. So I guess the AI thinks that Chie is best girl. <laughs> I thought that would be uh, funny for some people. D&D players would love this. Yeah, that's a great idea. Especially for, like, monster designs. I can imagine uh, being able to generate unique, uh, you know, kobolds and trolls and what have you on the fly. That'd be great. And especially if you, like... This is this is an all-in-one kind of AI generator. I'm sure it's possible, like what happened with that uh, waifu gen generator or whatever it was called, to like narrow the scope and get better results at the cost of less, uh, less flexibility. It's right, Kappa. <laughs> all right, so next one that I have demonstrates the inability of Dali to generate multiple characters. I asked for a Nintendo characters crossover, and it generates a number of Mario's and Luigi's pretty well, but the rest, eh, I don't know. <laughs> like, 
Like, the one in the middle kind of looks like it's got the body of Luigi, but the head of, like, Toon Link. And then th this one on the on the left-hand side, I don't know who those characters are. Like, behind Mario. Uh, kind of looks like a white-haired anime guy with, like, a boxing outfit on. And then next to him, I squint my eyes and I see uh, Miss... Uh, Ura Ura I can never say her name. Uraraka, the gravity girl from My Hero Academia. I know that's not what it is. It's way too vague, but that's what popped into my head. And that's part of the fun with generating these images is that the human mind just, you know, does what it does to fill in the blanks. In the middle below, Mario kind of looks like Rayman. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, I think maybe it tried to generate a Yoshi or two in the top row on the left and right. But yeah, Yoshi face just got completely destroyed. It turned into a flower on the left and on the right it like generated twice and now there's like a duplicate Yoshi nose. Can't believe we thought the same thing. Oh, you typed that out before I said it out loud. <laughs> uh, who else do we have here? I gotta say, I like the Luigi in the top right because it looks like a Lego Luigi <laughs> with, like, a plug socket for a face. I also like what it's doing with, like, the panels. It's, like, automatically paneling uh, the individual characters, which I didn't ask for it to do. It may be influenced by uh, images of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but, like, the bottom right in particular, uh, you know, it looks like it's trying to show off uh, six or seven different characters. And yeah, that kind of looks like Captain Falcon. Uh, and one of them, I think that might be Samus next to him. And maybe a really fucked up Sonic the Hedgehog with like giant alien boils on his face <laughs> on the on the right of that image. Kind of looks like Flood in the middle right. Uh, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And then of course you got the smeared Mario also in the bottom right. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to make more of these because I really want to see uh, the AI try to handle, like, multiple characters at once. Now let's just go ahead and send these off to the side for now. Uh, let me let me see if I can get Deli back up. Where did I put the tab, is the question. Did I, did I close it? I didn't mean to. I'm going to keep on trying, and maybe eventually something will get through, but, uh... I don't know if that's actually going to generate anything, but, uh... One can... nope. One of my favorite responses to this phenomenon has been, What if you wanted to go to heaven? But God said, too much traffic, try again later. Oh, here's one that I got that was really funny. Uh, so for this prompt, I decided to see what would happen if I typed in gibberish words. But I like what I got anyway. I think the only term that it interpreted was Dr. Robotnik. And I got some pretty good uh, fake Robotniks in this image. It's like the, the one in the top looks like He's... it's just a head on a balloon. Uh, top right is, like, Dr. Robotnik if he was, like, if he had a frog for a head, but still had the, uh... still had the mustache. I really like that one. And then right below that, that's... that kind of looks like, uh... Eggman in one of his hovercrafts, but it's also his legs? And it also kind of looks like he's wearing a hat, like a musketeer's hat. Yeah, yeah, it does look like smear frames on uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, I think it defaulted to Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog because I typed in Dr. Robotnik instead of Dr. Eggman. Like, I probably would have gotten a different result for Dr. Eggman's Pingus Dingus Machingus. And then, of course, in the dead center, I love that one. That I could turn that into a profile picture. It's almost like Robotnik with, uh, with a beta design and also, like, a face visor similar to an Among Us crewmate. <laughs> uh, the one on the left looks like a weird monster that's got, like, a mustache turning into bat wings. 
and he also he's also balancing on one leg, like the bottom half of him is just a toy top. Uh, bottom left. That that's straight up suspenders. I don't remember any adaptation of Doctor Robotnik that wears like black and yellow suspenders. But there it is. Uh, the bottom middle looks like a big puffy owl face. It kind of reminds me of uh, Rockadoodle, the villain from that film. And he's like about to stroke his non-existent beard. And then bottom right is just some kind of nightmare face. Now, let's zoom in on that a little bit. It, it just looks like it just looks like cracked paint. It looks like he's leaning over with like a white sleeve or like a robot arm over to the side of his hovercraft and he's just got this weird distorted evil grin and he's got like a cape behind him too yellow cape yeah they, these uh dr robotnik ones like i it the ai barely did anything it just interpreted dr robotnik but i still like it a lot i like what i got out of that <clears throat> out of that so then i tried something with uh you know x in the style of y my mind was obviously still on the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, so I was like, hmm, who could I insert into that cartoon? How about Captain Falcon? And this is what the AI came up with. Um, it kind of has that same, like, color palette as a screenshot from the cartoon, which is interesting to me. None of the Captain Falcons really came out all that great, which is surprising to me because I figured, you know, you can't see his eyes. Wouldn't it be easier to generate the helmet? But no, apparently not. It had a bit of trouble. The bottom right one just straight up looks like a Robocop. It looks like a Robocop helmet worn by, like, Vegeta in his old Saiyan armor. And then, of course, Sonic himself appears in a couple of frames. Uh, the bottom left one actually looks pretty good. You got Captain Falcon doing, like, an action pose. And then Sonic standing next to him, kind of doing nothing, but I mean, he's there. It's a pose that implies that they're both in the same frame. But yeah, definitely when it comes to multiple characters, we've got a ways to go. Another X in the style of Y thing. Uh, I tried to <laughs> depict Barack Obama as if he was an N64 Polygon character. <laughs> Which, surprisingly, the AI can interpret correctly. It can uh, take a figure and depict them as if they were, like, a low-poly model. Uh, you can also try searching for so-and-so in GTA San Andreas or something, or even, like, an earlier GTA game, and it'll give you, like, a funny little, like, PS2-era model smear face. Funny you say Vegeta, Captain Falcon and him share a Japanese voice actor. Really? <laughs> How about that? So yeah, some of these are just kind of like abstracted, uh, shapeified faces. I wouldn't really count that as being like a low poly model. This one's kind of alright. This one that's like the uh, low poly 3D bust of Obama's head. Uh, but this one in the top left, I think, got it pretty well. Aside from the face, which looks like it's kind of a bent band of texture. But I mean, you got the you got the triangular suit and uh, like the exaggerated head. I didn't even point that out. The fact that it knew to exaggerate the head because that was what a lot of N64 game uh, characters did. So that, that is just all very, very interesting to me. And I think that may be the last time that I use a real person as a reference for the AI. Now, here's something a little bit special. I tried describing my avatar, my very abstract avatar, as a pink orb piloting a mecha. And most of them didn't really get it, but some of them did! Some of them actually put, like, a ball into, into a little, like, machine tank. On like a gla on a on a laboratory table, like this one on the left kind of looks like a tank without the cannon. Uh, one in the middle looks like a no, honestly, it looks like a leg. It looks like a leg sticking out from the ball, and then the one on the right that like, that's pretty damn close to what I had in mind. Uh, except that the ball is too big. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have specified small pink ball in a small mecha. 
But yeah, that that just blows my mind that it was able to interpret that as as abstract as it was. If you make the images really small, the details get boring enough for your brain to fill in the blank and say, I think I know who that is. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so this was really special. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, <laughs> I could just AI generate my own avatars now. Uh, next experiment I did was a very dangerous experiment, and that was to just keep adding words until I thought the AI would break. So in this case... Canadian Mountie fighting Frost Giant with a mace in a moonlit valley with a Christmas-themed hot dog stand. Now, how many of those details actually translated? Well, I'll spoil something for you. There's no Frost Giants. Maybe the AI doesn't quite know what a Frost Giant is. But yeah, we got, we got the Mountie, we got the moonlit valley, we got a Christmas tree in one of them, and a hot dog stand in the same frame. So that's kind of interesting that I was able to get three subjects in one picture. And then the one in the bottom right, like that actually looks kind of like what I would imagine a Christmas themed hot dog stand to look like. I've never actually seen one in real life, but it's got like streamers on the top of it. It's got the red and white uh, paint on the body and the the little swirls in the si inside of it could be interpreted as hot dogs. I don't know. And then, of course, you got the Mountie next to it, like, holding just a giant-ass hot dog. <laughs> as weird as this one was, I really like how it turned out. Even though it is missing quite a few details. The one in the top middle is trying to smile. Oh, and, and the one in the top middle also has a horse that is attempting to turn it into a hot dog. <laughs> that can happen. That can happen. I have an excellent example to share with you guys. Here's a crusty son of a gun that I tried to generate. I was trying to get like a guy with a beard uh, in in chainmail armor, and instead I got like a PS1 Hagrid whose hair is chainmail. <laughs> and it's so stupid, but I love it so much. Even though it completely misinterpreted what I wanted. That, that is a really good, uh, <laughs> a really good like smudge face. Uh, here's one result that I was really disappointed with. I wanted Microsoft Windows 12. I wanted it to interpret what Windows 12 is going to look like. And I wanted it to show me a virus on the desktop. And unfortunately, I just got Windows desktops. That's probably not too much of a challenge for an AI to generate, but I really wish I could have seen a computer virus as interpreted by an AI. And I didn't get that, and that's too bad. So, this one. I was really hoping I'd get something in the style of NES box art, but I didn't get a single thing like that. So, I guess it just omitted the NES and tried to give me Animal Crossing box art. Or at the very least, like, screenshots from an Animal Crossing game. And it generally gets the idea right. You can make out villagers, trees, balloons. Uh, maybe like crop squares, water, you can see like a waterfall, river, in the top right. And then there's the thing in the top middle. I need, an, I need a name for this monstrosity. Because it, it, it very much looks like it wants to come out of the computer and haunt my nightmares. It's like a pale albino elephant, like that, that's like the nose curling upwards in the center of its face, and the little things on the side are, like, ears, but also, like, spikes. It kind of looks halfway between dog ears, elephant ears, and, like, bovine horns with red tips. The body is just, like, a weird urn. And then, of course, the elephant in the room, ha ha ha, is the single eyeball, making it look like frickin' You know, like, Sans Undertale coming to make me repent for my sins. Why did it think to do that? I didn't ask for a specific villager! But it gave me that! <laughs> so that is definitely part of the fun with uh, experimenting with an AI like this, is that sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna get.
Uh, here, here's uh, another thing that I shared on Discord recently. This is not an AI generation. This is AI upscaling. And I just wanted to show off like a before and after for this image. This is the original size. And if I try to like blow it up here, it's probably going to look really crusty. Yeah, you can see like the artifact and everything. So yeah, AI upscalers are getting pretty good, I would say. It cleaned up really nicely, I would say. Would recommend if you have a really crusty old screenshot of a TV show or an anime or something. And you want to see what it would look like if it was a bit cleaner. Alright, so from this point forward, I don't have any more, like... Well, I got this. I didn't make this prompt, but, uh... Apparently, uh, Deli Mini handles animals pretty well. So... Someone just did a basic search for a cute fox and found some things that are honestly hard to distinguish from actual photographs. Like, the one on the bottom right just looks like it's winking. So, it can handle animal eyes decently well, but not human eyes. But yeah, for this last set that I have... Uh, I didn't save the prompt. But I did save the individual images. These are just, like, fantasy characters that I had envisioned. And I was trying to get the AI to come up with concepts for me. Cute tardigrade. No. 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 No, 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 no. Too much traffic. Try again. Okay. <laughs> that was going to be the joke, is that I would say, no, I'm never going to search that, and then I would search that, but oh well. Maybe keep that in mind for next time. Alright, so... Uh, Chainmail Hagrid was one of those. I never typed in the word Hagrid, but that's a very Hagridy fellow down there. That was one of them. Uh, this is another... Uh, I think this was also from the same prompt. No, this was different. This was when I changed plate mail, uh, chain mail to plate mail. And, well, I got the beard all right, but didn't really want the helmet. I also got this, which kind of looks like it turned into a walrus man. Like an anthropomorphic walrus with, uh, like, Viking armor. Pretty interesting. Not what I was looking for, though. Only heard of the Tardigrade from Bug Fables' Metal. You've never seen what it would normally look in real life if it's a bug. Well, actually, it's a microbe. Yeah, the, the tardigrade is uh, also known as the water bear. And I don't remember how accurately it was depicted in bug fables, but I think it's pretty spot on. I can go ahead and Google it real quick. They're very fascinating creatures that almost look like they have little scrunchy faces. Uh... First things first, I'm going to have to get all this cleared out. Actually, I don't think there's a chance in hell of that happening. So how about I do this instead? There we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What happened to the page? Well, it was on screen for a moment. I hope you got to see it. I can't actually scroll through web pages that load in uh, OBS, so never mind that. <laughs> Uh, here, let's try this instead. Their claim to fame is that they can survive in deep space. Because of their resilient skin and being able to, like, seal their air supply. Just, like, curl up and become, like, catatonic and then come back to life when they enter an environment again. They're fascinating creatures, but you have to have a, a microscope in order to see them. I invincible. Yep. They're right up there with cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they belong in dead space. They look like they belong in deep space. Alright, what else have I got to share? Uh, I didn't upscale very many of these, so when I zoom them in, they're probably going to be really blurry and ugly, but here's a different prompt that I got. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let your mind fill in the blanks as to what the prompt was. Here's another one, same setting, same prompt, but looking a little bit Game of Thrones-ish. 
based on that armor design, but I'm sure that's based off of a real historical design. Yeah, again, this is mostly just going to be, like, attempts at depicting original characters from here on out, so if you're here for funny memes, uh, you can go ahead and leave now. I don't have any more to share, unfortunately. Uh, I tried getting a fellow with graying hair and glasses at one point or another. Here's one result I got. It did not handle the glasses well. He just kind of looks like his face is fusing with some goggles. With a very big bloated nose. I tried a couple more times. Uh, this one, he's being seen from behind, which is actually kind of unusual for Dally. Uh, it usually shows uh, pictures facing the camera, or facing the viewer. So it was a little bit surprising to see one turned away from me like this. So of course I can't tell whether he has glasses or not. Uh, here's another one. Decided to become a bit more photorealistic this time. He has two right arms, which I very much don't agree with. But the glasses turned out all right, I guess. <laughs> and then this one. This one I actually like a lot, even if it is, like, way off from what I had in mind. Uh, that almost looks like the goggles Jim Carrey wore in Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I really like the design of those glasses. I've never seen them before. And I really dig the almost Albert Einstein-ish uh, hairstyle he's got going on. Clothes, not quite what I had in mind, but I think that one turned out pretty cool. Again, even if it did turn out a little bit different from what I wanted. Medieval Europeans trying to conquer North Africa, not doing so hot. <laughs> so yeah, I just got like a whole collage forming here. I, I spent hours on this last night. I could not stop myself. Featuring Dante from the Devil Macrisius. All right, here I tried to get a clergyman with orange hair. Uh, that's probably the ugliest result that I got. <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna leave him be. Uh, I tried to get one holding a weapon. I specifically typed in mace again. I don't know why I keep trying to show characters with maces. That's the closest result that I got. A lot of the other ones other ones were just vague like stick weapons, where I couldn't even figure out what the hell it was. I thought that was a bishop for a second. Now, this one in particular looks like he's got, like, a scarecrow mask on his face. Like, it looks like the scarecrow if he decided to go with a religious theme with his costume. Very peculiar. Again, not quite what I was looking for. Uh, then I tried uh, getting the same character depicted doing first aid. Didn't get anything relevant. However, I did get this, which almost looks like the same character trying to, like... Trying to drunkenly stumble his way into a hospital. Like, that vaguely looks like a hospital in the background, so I guess there's that. But yeah, these ones did not turn out all that great. All that great. Uh, this one... Is very far off from what I had envisioned, but it, it, it turned out looking pretty cool on its own. I like that the... Uh, the orange hair kind of turned into, like, a mustache and mut mutton chops on his face. Like, that's- I- I really like the way that that, uh, facial hair turned out. And I don't think I've seen a character with that exact, uh... Hold on, maybe I have. Maybe I have. Uh-huh. Yeah, I totally have. Tell me if, uh, this character rings a bell to any of you. So yeah, that's a pretty distinct uh, uh, mutton chops and mustache combination, and it works really well for certain uh, kinds of male characters. <laughs> There's a game called 11 to 11 Memories Retold. The art style of that game almost looks like Dolly smearing. I'm sure that was a deliberate attempt. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Pilot Red Sun that does like weird, sketchy, smeary faces uh, for a stylistic effect. Is that the guy from Samurai Jack? Yep, that's the Scotsman from Samurai Jack. Oh uh, god, I gotta rewatch that series someday. At one point, I tried looking up a character. I tried getting the AI to create a character that had confidence, quote unquote. 
kind of got that with this guy, but, uh... Yeah, it's like his, uh... I don't even think that's supposed to be a mouth. That's just like a weird smudge of red paint around his, uh, around his chin. So, kind of getting there pose-wise, but otherwise it completely missed a mark for me. I tried to get a similar character, uh, to hold a bow and arrow. And my god, I didn't have any... Is that Freddy Mercury? <laughs> no, I didn't search for Freddy Mercury. Uh, I tried getting a guy holding a bow and arrow, and, uh, just did not get any success at all. I, I get a feeling that unless you search for, like, swords, uh, the AI is going to have a very difficult time depicting any kind of held weapon. So, a particularly funny detail is when I tried searching for, you know, a character drawing a bow and arrow, you know, not draw loose, I instead got, like, a drawing of a bow and arrow. As in, like, 2D pencil sketch. And it wasn't even the bow and arrow! It was just the guy. It was just a sketch of the guy. Like, it just completely threw out bow and arrow. And... God, I don't know how to get around that. Maybe it can't handle the fact that bow and arrow are three different words? I don't know. You would think that that would be common, a common enough uh, grouping of words to where it would know what to do with it, but hey. I got a guy with an arrow going over his back. I had to just leave it at that, because I was not getting any success otherwise. I got a, got a couple more fancy characters here. This one, I wanted a knight in blue armor. Somehow he ended up with, like, a chainmail mask going over his entire face. I don't know how that happened. I mean, the rest of it looks all right. I told it to, I, I instructed it to show him standing in front of a wooden ship, and instead it just, like, sank him into the ocean. So... I guess we're halfway there. <laughs> Uh, this one turned out kind of interesting. I It's got the hair kind of right. It's got the armor kind of sort of right. But I don't know what that weapon is. I think for this prompt, I typed in Halberd. And instead, I got this thing that, honest to God, looks like those uh, rocket launchers that they use in Valkyria Chronicles. That they, like, hold over their shoulder and fire. Chainmail dude reminds me of Robocop. I've gotten a few things that look like Robocop. I don't know how it keeps happening. Uh, I also tried several times to depict a character standing in a battlefield. This is one of them. I guess that's about as good as I'm gonna get for the time being. I mean, there's grass, there's a sky, there's a vague implication that there may be, like, arrows raining through the sky with those little streaks in the paint. Yeah, the Lancer weapons. I, I couldn't remember what they were called. Uh, I was also broadly disappointed with that character, so I gave up pretty quickly after that. I wonder if the AI has a bias for female characters instead of male characters, though, because when I started uh, this search query, I started getting much more uh, coherent designs, I think. This one, I wanted a warrior woman holding a spear. And I got some pretty decent results out of that. I got several. I'm just going to go ahead and load them one by one. Well, that one... I don't think the weapon turned out quite right. It almost looks like there's a scythe being held. That's, like, going into her leg. Uh, no... No, uh... No coherence to speak of there. But this one turned out pretty good, I think. This looks like, uh, the warrior getting ready for, like, a sword fighting duel. And the armor's pretty comprehensive, if a little bit, like, bizarrely skinny around the legs. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, spears seem to work out all right, because the AI is already, just, like, interpreting every weapon as, like, a weird stick. A metal stick. So, it's not too much of a stretch to interpret a spear from that. So that, I think, is why... Searching for things with a spear worked out better. Again, I ended up with a lot of these because this uh, search query worked out a lot better. Again, with that weird extra stick. I don't know where that came from. This looks almost like Irika's pose from Sacred Stones, where she's, like, drawing back with the with the rapier and uh, 
further away in the distance. I guess he can interpret the other thing going down to the ground as being, like, a uh, scabbard? Looks like a Castlevania character. Eh, it kind of does. Kind of does. I, I think there's a, uh, there's an interpretation of Ka Carmilla in one of those games that gave her red hair. So, yeah, I can, I can kind of see it. But for, for this one, this just looks like a, like a stick jabbing itself into her spine. So, still not quite getting what I want out of this. Uh, this one, the armor came out really nice. Very shiny, but the weapon kind of just looks like she's holding up a dagger or two. Mr. Lark Mark a little bit. I don't know what that black part is on her, on her brow. I know it's not an eyebrow. So it's like a weird, isolated strand of black hair. I don't know what that's doing there. Alright, this is the last of this set. This almost kind of looks like Cordelia from uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. I didn't... I didn't enter... <laughs> I didn't specifically ask for, like, the the leggings, but that that comes strikingly close to what, like, a Pegasus Knight would wear. Even if the head got kind of cut off. At this point, I started wondering if there was, like, an AI service out there that would uh, go beyond the scope of an image to, like, expand the canvas and interpret details. I know I've seen that before. I've seen it done with the movie poster for Joker, but I couldn't find it. And if anyone happens to know what I'm talking about and can direct me to that website, let me know uh, at some point or another. All right, then I tried a few other prompts where I tried to get more than one character on the screen. And I had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble. I eventually interpreted that I basically had to narrow the details down to like one detail per character in order to get the second one to appear. Otherwise, the first character is going to receive all those traits. So this one, I tried to get, like, you know, a light-haired girl and a black-haired girl uh, together in one frame in, like, a bedroom or something. This one took it a little bit too far, and it looks like it generated a third uh, girl sitting down on the floor <laughs> or something. I don't know where that third figure came from. I didn't ask for it. And I specifically typed in the word two. She looks like that one character from Elden Ring. Uh, which one would... I'll, I'll have to play that game someday. I, I'm afraid of Elden Ring. That's one of those rare games where I'm afraid of it because it seems too good. And it'll, like, consume my life if I start playing it. So that's why I haven't even really considered playing it yet. Someday I will. Just not anytime soon. I tried a couple more times with getting more than one character uh, into the frame, but after a certain point, I stopped caring because, you know, if you can't assign specific details to them, then, you know, they may as well not even be there if they're going to be so non-specific. So some of these may look kind of nice, but because they kind of missed the mark a little bit on what I wanted, uh, I ended up just kind of giving up on this after about... Oh, five tries. Oh, I think I accidentally, like, booped that one out of existence. Well, that that's several attempts on the same subject, so... How, how successful do you guys think it was at generating a second character? I think not so much, but we're getting there. And then the last thing that I tried to do was to just get a single character... What? Wouldn't recommend playing Elden Ring. It really is too good to be true. <laughs> I'll I'll try to limit myself if and when I get around to that. Okay. So the last thing that I did last night was focus in on a specific character in a specific scene, trying to convey a specific emotion. And for the most part, it was a failure. I mean, it got the details of the character pretty well. This one in particular came out really cute. Like, this is one of the few instances of eyes coming out successfully uh, with this AI. Very simplistic, little, like, coal spec eyes. But, you know what, C considering the weird creepy shadow eyes that we've gotten before, I say that that's good enough. <laughs> if it ends up looking like a mother character, then sure, I'll take it. 
How will the AI handle iconic duels like Banjo Kazooie or Ratchet and Clank? Hmm. That's a good question. If this works, I will show it. Too much traffic. Try again later. Shoot. Might have come across wrong. Meant that there are some flaws that don't come across well until you get deep into the game and analyze it. What? I mean, sure, I, I, I'm sure that it's not perfect, but a lot of people seem to like it for what it is, and it seems like a pretty uh, stellar standout for its genre. So I think I would still enjoy it, even if it is, if it is not perfect. I was actually going to ask how sarcastic, how sarcastic you were being with that comment. Like, saying something is too good to be true, you could take that uh, a number of ways, depending on how it's spoken. Well, anyway, th this character, I kind of want to complete this ki this picture. Like, fix the, fix the, <laughs> the, the weird sludge in the bottom half of the image and uh, add, a, add a hand holding the pencil in the top. I'm surprised that it generated the pencil. I didn't ask for a pencil. I asked for like a desk or a writing desk. And I got a, I got a pencil out of it. That's the only time that happened. So that's pretty neato. Here is Okay, so if you if you want to brave the depths of Dally Mini and you really want to try to get a face out of it, try typing in close up of before your search query and you might get a result like this. That is indeed a close-up, and it is trying its hardest to create a an eye and a mouth. And a hand. Hold on a minute, I'm gonna change the music track real quick. It, it's, it's unfortunate because I feel like that's the best face that I've gotten out of all these searches. But it's still missing the mark a little bit. She's fucking, <laughs> and that is not what I wanted her to be doing. I gave, I didn't put a very specific different emotion that I'm not going to reveal just yet. Uh, kind of build the suspense a little bit. Um, yeah, that look of surprise is not what I was aiming for, but hey, it's something. At least it's something, and not <laughs> everywhere you look, it's creepy buster here. Uh... <laughs> It'll be a while before we call our way out of that uncanny valley. Here's when I tried to get uh, the same character, like, holding a handkerchief to their face. And it kind of got that right, but uh, I don't know what's going on with the second part of the body. It kind of just looks like a big purple lump with a smear of tan in it. The desk is there, the handkerchief is there, there's even like a little wadded up piece of paper there. And the head is downcast. I did specifically ask for the face to be down or something, but, uh... Still not quite perfect. Here's another attempt at a face! I didn't like this one at all, but I decided to keep it because, hey, it's, uh, it's something. It's not a vague shadow smear. It's more like a mosaic, like someone took a mosaic tool over someone's face to censor them. Again, it's something. Here's one with no face. Uh, I like that it generated, like, a necklace for the character to wear. I kind of like the design of the clothes. I think at this point, I started telling it to draw things in the style of uh, older anime. And I think the results start picking up from here. Um, the desk is still there, but the rest of it, that's just like an idle hand pose. And also, it looks like the table is bisecting her. It looks like she's got her hand on her knee, sitting down, but, like, the table is going all the way across her lap. So, there's another one. Here is another, like, I... The girl with the necklace has a Naruto style. Uh, you know what? That might not be a bad idea. To specifically search for a Naruto style, because that's really prolific. It's got a distinct style. And yes, you're right, it does kind of resemble Hinata a little bit. I don't even watch that anime, and I am pretty well aware of who that character is. Uh, this one... 
I don't know, this one kind of turned into a mess. The desk is kind of sort of there. I don't know what's on top of the desk. I don't know if it's supposed to be a wad of papers or if it's a hand or what, but, uh... I think, I think when I was searching for these, I tried to get the character to hold her hands up to her face. And this almost looks like it's veering into the Scream territory. Which, honestly, I wouldn't mind. It's better than just a generic smear. But even this is still falling short of the mark. My god, I have a whole ass collage here. Maybe I'll make that the thumbnail for this segment. Uh, here's another one that I really didn't like. But it was different enough to where I felt like I had to save it. This one has a functional mouth. However, the mouth, because of the way that the, like, image is kind of, like, splintering into the... from one shade to the next, it looks like jagged teeth. Or, like, the skin is being torn open in order to open the mouth. I don't like it at all. I do not like it one bit. But at least it's something different. <laughs> Hey, if you're looking for nightmare imagery, this is a good site to consult. Here's another one that I got simply because, hey, it's eyes that aren't plain shadow smears. With a little bit of editing, the eyes could be good, but the face is a bit misshapen. It turned into kind of like a weird blocky wedge <laughs> on a really thin pencil neck. But we're getting there. We're kind of sort of getting there. And hey, thinking of, like, the Scream, like that particular painting, here's one that kind of veers in that territory. I say that because, uh, like, from a distance it doesn't look too bad. The eye, of course, is very fucked up, but when you zoom in, it becomes more apparent just how fucked up it is. I kind of wish I could just copy and paste the opposite eye over the weird, like, milky one. And the hand, of course, is a little bit off too, but I don't I don't expect an AI to be able to generate individual fingers. I feel like that's a bit much to ask at this point. It is possible. I've seen pictures of people uh, prompting the AI to generate, like, a person playing the guitar or something. And in that case, uh, it does generate the hand pretty well, but in this case, it did not. It turned into just a crosshatch. But again, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. Inch by inch, it's getting there to expression, expressing an emotion of some kind. In this case, it looks like surprise with the mouth uh, being covered by the hand. I was determined at this point. I had to get something that conveyed some form of emotion, and I wasn't going to stop until I got it. This was another result where the eyes are very mismatched, and I don't like it, but... An alternate, an alternate, like, elbows on desk kind of pose. And a mouth. <laughs> I shouldn't feel this lucky to have these, like, low-grade mouths on these pictures, but... You know, you, you can see in the background just how many faceless uh, images I got. I felt lucky to have something with a mouth that didn't make me want to scream in horror. This one is only halfway there. <laughs> We've officially reached Junji Ito territory. I'm sure that you can very specifically ask the AI to show you something in the style of Junji Ito. Again, I'm gonna try to prompt the uh, the website for it. <gasps> I think it's actually working this time. All right, well, I've only got one more image to show you guys, so we'll end on this, and then I'll show you what I just typed in just now. So this was where I stopped. I already had posted this to the Discord, so you've already seen this, but yeah. The... I, I wanted to convey a feeling of sadness on this character. And finally I got it. No eyes, no mouth, but that little gesture with the hand over the chest in the, the desk environment, like, this is what I said could be... like, you could interpret an entire story from this image. Because, you know, the, help, the head is tilted down a little bit. This is like an office or a school environment. There's a mess of papers on the desk. But w clearly with more behind her, uh, I'm interpreting the, like, green wedge on the left as being, like, the elbow of another person. So maybe this character is, like, new in a job or new in a classroom or something. 
and is just like nervous about what's about to happen. Maybe they're about to take a really important test. Or maybe they're just like, they have, they're being stared at by a hostile coworker or something. It understands what a sad color scheme can look like. I think that was just a coincidence. I think at this point, uh, the style that I was asking for was, quote, from a 1990s anime. So I didn't ask for a specific color palette, but yeah, I do agree that the colors chosen for this image do work really well. All right, can I just like shift click on all these and delete them all from OBS? Yes, I can. So here's what I got out of Dali just now. Banjo-Kazooie in the style of Junji Ito. We got a few plain Banjo-Kazooies. We got a Banjo-Kazooie with gumdrop eyes. We got one that looks like they're being fused with a striped snake. But then you got these two in the middle. And you can see, like, the, the shading techniques being used in a manner similar to what Junji Ito would draw. Uh, I think the fact that it's two characters is a bit confusing for the AI, but <laughs> we got something. We definitely got something out of this. Oh god, the one on the bottom left is, like, waving to us from the nightmare dimension. <laughs> oh god, and then the one, the one that's uh, bottom center. Can I, like, just click on it individually? Yeah, that looks like it stopped halfway between trying to just depict Banjo-Kazooie and trying to depict the Junji Ito art style. So now we've just got a massive nose and mouth in one art style, completely different from the others. Actually, Kazooie's head is also different. Why did it focus on the heads? Also, Kazooie's head kind of looks like a... Well, frankly, it looks like a wrench, but... <laughs> It also kind of looks like a flamingo or something. Oh god, that is... That, that is wild. <laughs> I'm glad that we got one of these to work live, so you know what? We'll just go ahead and set that aside for a future livestream. I may just do a dedicated livestream of this. Uh without breaking for Fire Emblem, because this is just so fascinating to me. And it'll be a nice chill thing to do while we take a break, because I'm going to be moving in the next uh, week or two. So while I'm doing that, uh, I can just run this on my local computer. Hopefully it won't make streaming it too difficult, because let me tell you, running this locally does eat up a lot of, like, your GPU. So you can't do it unless you have a sufficiently strong machine. If you're working on a laptop, I don't recommend trying this at home. Uh, in the in the space of four to eight gigabytes of uh, like ex accessible memory for your GPU is mandatory. And if you want to run anything more sophisticated like that, uh, more sophisticated than that, like Dali Mega, you got to go even higher, and you may have to also make a subscription with Google Colab, because uh, I tried. I couldn't get it to work. It just took forever to respond, and it never uh, successfully installed the back end. So Dolly Mini is what I have to work with for now, and I think I'm satisfied with leaving it at that, because even just with this, it's so fascinating being able to have your thoughts visualized like this. Weird obsession with heads is a very Junji Ito thing to do. <laughs> well, you know what? Going back to something that Geonemic Warrior mentioned earlier, uh, one thing that is definitely very similar between uh, Dali and Akinator is that both of them will generate more reliable, like, specific results the better known the character in question is. So, you know, you go... You go to Akinator searching for Captain America, You'll find he'll guess him within like five questions. You go here and type in Captain America. You can put him in almost any situation and it'll adapt his general features to perfectly match whatever whatever else you type in. Try to do that with something like, oh, I don't know, uh, Elfie of the Blue Sea. I don't think that's going to generate anything. But you know what? I could try that someday. Anyway, that's going to be about it for today. That was a fun way to kill an hour. 
Uh, I had a lot of fun with that. I hope you guys did too. And I hope that you guys can understand just how hooked I become with this AI shit. Because uh, it, it really has just completely fascinated me. Uh, I may return with other AI-related things in the future, including uh, what, whatever the name of that one is where you write stories with the AI. Uh, other image generators, and maybe even also a uh, music generator. I think that would be fun to work with. And if nothing else, it would be perfect for generating music for segments like this. So that I don't have to, like, risk copyright infringement. So we'll, we'll consider that for another day. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and go and get ready to move. Uh, by this time next week, I might be in my new home. I might not. We'll just have to wait and see. So I'm not guaranteeing anything for the next week. I'll just keep you guys posted on Discord uh, when I plan to go live next. So... We'll leave it at that. I'm gonna go get something to drink. I'm glad that you found it fascinating, Hollow. I'm glad that you can uh, see where I'm coming from, finally. And uh, I'll be in touch, and I'll catch up with you guys later. Have a good night and stay cool. We're actually, I, I mean it this time. We're gonna be approaching like 100 degrees here this week. So don't overexert yourselves and stay cool. All right, have a good night, everyone. Goodbye.